I must admit, I am very happy for my colleagues, Zira Naurizbaeva and Lilia Kalas. And the reason is the following. These talented writers and charming women have recently published the book named The Adventures of Batu and his friends in the country of Barsak Kilmez. Biknur Kisikov, writer, author of numerous novels, stories and poems, member of Jury of Literature Contest, inspirer and organizer of Kitab Fest Festival, founder of Kazakhstan Encyclopedia Project, encyclopedia.kz. It is important to mention that this book is the sequel of the story In Search of the Golden Chalice, Adventures of Batu and His Friends, which was published in 2014. Our very own Joanne Rowling caused quite a stir in the market of Kazakh children's literature. Not only did they write a sequel, but they also created a series of books, and that means a lot. After all, we have forgotten about children's literature. Indeed, those who grew up in Soviet times can still remember the kid's writer Berdybek Sokpakbaev and his famous story, My Name is Koja, or Maxim Zverev, who created a whole gallery of characters of the animal world. But since then, quite some time has passed, and more and more children are now reading Harry Potter, The Chronicles of Narnia. The Hobbit and other books. Of course, I have nothing against these exceptional children's books. But when there is no local domestic literature, it can be quite depressing. The Story of the Boy Who Lived is the most successful book series of recent decades. The total circulation of all seven books about Harry Potter exceeded 400 million copies. It was translated into 80 languages but until recently, the Kazakh version was not on this list. In 2020, the situation has changed thanks to the Almaty publishing house Stepin World Publishing. They presented their translation of the first book of the series in Kazakh. It is called Harry Potter Min Palsapatas. Judging by the hype caused by this news, Kazakh diehard Potter fans are still very active. So indeed, it is even more surprising that the fans had to wait for more than 23 years before the Kazakh language version of the book was released. Dinara Mazian Sayat Muhammediar, Narkiz Beri Kazi, and Nazgul Kojabiak are the ones who were in charge of translating the book. Now they're working on the second book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Publishers promise that over the coming years, all seven books written by J.K. Rowling will be translated into Kazakh. Zira Naurizbaeva and Lilia Kalas are well-known and even somewhat iconic figures in domestic literature. However, before their writings had nothing to do with the children's literature. Zira Naurizbaeva, for instance, is the author of the monumental work named The Eternal Sky of the Kazakhs. In this monograph, she addresses such complex issues as metaphysics, semiotic aspects of kuz collective archetypes and more, meaning that when we talk about her, we talk about a dedicated scholar, cultural studies expert and a writer whose interests lie in fields distant from children's stories. And Lilia Kalas, too, has never previously written in this genre. Lilia Kalas is a philologist, writer, blogger, screenwriter, radio host, literary skills tutor. In the period from 2001 to 2014, she worked as the editor-in-chief of the Knigo Lub Literary Magazine. She is a member of the Writers' Union of Kazakhstan, laureate of the Soros Kazakhstan Debut Literary Contest and the Ruch International Competition. So there is no surprise that when these two professionals united their talents, a very powerful book was born. I want to emphasize the fact that their first book, In Search of the Golden Chalice, was awarded a number of awards. It was third at the 2014 Central Asia Open Book Forum. Later that year, it entered the top 10 Kazakhstan bestsellers list according to the Meloman ranking and entered the recommended list of additional reading for elementary school. 
Moreover, as Zira Naurizbayeva says, one of the first book's fans has reread it 59 times in order to imprint the plot in his memory while it was waiting for the release of the sequel. And it took quite some time, the release of the second book. Unfortunately, publishing business in Kazakhstan is becoming increasingly unprofitable and difficult. However, writers are accustomed to the fact that they won't earn anything on their books. But let's not focus on sad things. Eventually the book was released, the readers didn't have to wait in vain. And it's great that children love the series and that they were able to wait for so long. We cannot reveal the plot of the new book, so let's talk about the first book of the series. I am not in any way an expert on children's literature, but nevertheless, I will attempt to retell and understand it. So this is a tale of Batu and his friends, Dana and Sasha. They go to school and experience all kinds of problems characteristic of their age. For example, two guys, Scorpio and Kairat, are constantly bullying them. Batu cannot overcome the fear that he feels before the mysteriously dangerous Scorpio and his friend, and the boy is very upset because of this. And also, he got a low mark for which those same bullies were to blame. And then, when upset Batu came back home, a creature from another world suddenly appeared before him. This was also a teenager, but older and more ancient. His name was Aspara. He explained that he entered this world through the town of Yisik, where his body was buried in the burial mound. As it turned out, it was the well-known golden warrior himself who appeared in front of Batu. And this golden young man entered our world during Nauruz, the day of the spring equinox, when the line between the worlds became thinner. So why did he come? It turned out that he had his own interest in our world. He was looking for a golden chalice, and Batu was supposed to help him, since he was a strong warrior. No wonder Batu's name was a heroic name. By that time, our protagonist was a bit confused, so he had to ask the stranger about the golden chalice. What Aspara told him was the following legend. One day, right on the Nauru's holiday eve at night, several gold objects fell down from the sky glowing. This was witnessed by Targitai hunter's son, Lipoksai, Arpoksai, and Kolaksai. They immediately rushed into the steppe and soon found a place where the objects landed. These golden objects were plow, yoke, axe, and chalice. Lipoksai was the first one who attempted to pick up the objects, but suddenly they flared up with fire. Then Arpoksai dared to reach out to them. The flame rose again, higher than skies. He almost burned himself. When it was Koloksai's turn, the flame suddenly went out, and the youngest brother was able to pick the golden things up and carry them home. People considered this a heavenly sign and recognized Koloksai as their ruler. So you should know, Batu, the great Koloksai, he was my noble ancestor. Thanks to the golden plow, yoke, and the axe, people learned how to plow the land, graze cattle, build houses, process metal, and learned other crafts and arts. The most precious treasure of all was, of course, the golden chalice. The plain water, if poured into, turned into magical. And the one who drank a sip of this water became wise, honest and fair. But one day the chalice disappeared without a trace, along with the young prince who was guarding it. And this prince was Aspara's elder brother. Ever since the chalice was gone, people became evil, and wars broke, and one of which Aspara has died. But his spirit is alive, and he is here to return the chalice and find out what happened to his brother. Later, things were unfolding rapidly. Batu and Aspara were transferred to another world in quite an original way. 
A special melody played on Dombra became a portal to the other world. However, the young man did not notice that Batu's friend, Dana, was watching them, that she followed them, which of course resulted in a new adventure. In the meantime, Batu and Aspara found themselves in the center of the world near the Shingistau Mountains, where, according to a legend, the world tree Baitirek is located. In its crown, there is a nest made by the mythical bird Samruk. However, two guys didn't find Baitirek or Samruk. There was only a scorched desert under their feet. They barely had time to discuss these strange things when the witch, Jiz Tirnak, attacked them. The young men were trying to flee from her, but in the end they had to fight the monster. Aspara was seriously injured and remained to recover in a mystical cave, and Batu returned home in an even more peculiar way. Later that evening, it turned out that Donna was missing. The whole neighborhood tried to find her, but they didn't succeed. By the end of the second day, Batu found out that she overheard his conversation with Aspara and followed them. Brave boy rushed to the rescue of his friend. He struck the strings of the Dombra and found himself in the world of snakes, which was ruled by Jilin Bapi Khan. Once he entered this world, he managed to save a small snake from death. She turned out to be the local princess. And, at her insistence, he paid her father a visit to ask for reward. Princess Snake's father, Snake Han, swallowed Batu twice. A terrible reward, if you ask me. But after all of this, Batu was equipped with luxurious armor. And he returned back home together with the Snake Princess, who in fact was Donna herself. Once they were back in the real world, Batu and Donna confided in their friend Sasha, telling him about their journey. And he found a Kuishi, a connoisseur of history and their future mentor. He told the guys that in the place where Aspara moved Batu, there once was a great tree. But scary people in black leather jackets came there and chopped it down convincing the locals that the tree was obscuring the sun and was interfering with their farming. The tree was destroyed. And then the Semei nuclear test site was built in its place, destroying the sacred heart of the earth, thus erasing from the memory of people that the earth was their mother and the sky was their father. And as it happens in any tale, there was a villain. It turned out that the grandfather of Scorpio, the one that bullied Batu, was one of those people in black leather jackets. He was scheming, trying to prevent the children from searching for the chalice. And that's why he sent his grandson to spy on them. And he worshipped the evil spirit. It looked like a huge brown bear. An unexpected plot twist, isn't it? I could tell you the whole story all the way to the end, but it's better that I won't do this. It's better that you read it, and that you will have a chance to understand who this book is suitable for, children or adults. After all, everything in this book is quite ambiguous. Of course, the authors did a great job. With every chapter of the book, they tried to arouse the reader's interest in Kazakh mythology and traditions encouraging further research. But the book has so many allegories and direct references to the history. And this history looks quite subjective. In a way, it seemed to me that the book turned out to be too complex for a fairy tale. Did I completely confuse or intrigue you? I hope it is the latter. Well, Buy the book, read it, share your findings. Let's see if they are anything like mine. See you soon.